And good evening on this Monday night. Welcome to the UD Football Show. With head coach Stan Sweefel. Coach will be joining us here in just a moment. So we've got the Spartans' first American Rivers Conference victory of the season to talk about and uh, break down uh, over the Co-College Cohawks. 20-14 to 14 this past Saturday at Chalmers Field on a wet, a miserable day. But uh, the Spartans come through after a one-hour weather delay, and uh, we were starting to wonder uh, when they were going to begin playing because there was just thunderstorm after thunderstorm rolling through, causing a delay. But uh, they got it going at uh, 2 o'clock or shortly after that, and uh, the Spartans come away with the hard-fought victory 20-14 to 14 over the Cohawks. Again, to get that first win in American Rivers Conference play. So we'll visit about that and uh, talk about that with Coach, and then uh, we'll talk about the next opponent. Uh, the Spartans go on the road again as they'll travel to Pella to take on the Central College Dutch as they will match up with the Dutch uh, coming up on Saturday. It's a 1 o'clock kickoff, and uh, Paul Meisner is telling me there's a chance of snow in the forecast Friday night around that area. Not much, but uh, it's not going to affect affect the game at all. But we've seen snow down at, uh, down at Pella, so that, that wouldn't be a surprise if it did. But uh, the Spartans will be ta- taking on uh, the Dutch, who are undefeated 4-0 uh, in uh, the season, 2-0 in the American Rivers Conference. So we've got that to talk about. And also assistant coach Rob Huberty is going to join us on the program. Uh, you get a chance to hear from him about his take on the season. And so we've got a lot to get to. So we're going to do it here in just a moment. Coach Swayful will come and join me and talk with us about that win over Co. First of all, when we return, this is the UD Football Show on 101.1 The River. And we're back on the University of Dubuque Football Show here on this Monday night from the coach's office. Coach Stan Zweifel, uh joining me right now. The Spartans get their first American Rivers yeah. Conference win. Go to one and two in conference play, two and three on the season. 2014 victory over the Co-College Co-Hawks. Never a doubt, was there? No, <laughs> certainly not. We, we weren't concerned at all. Especially at, we missed that extra point with about 8.37 <laughs> left in the game. I'm saying oop, oops, oops. But, we started uh, to wonder a little bit yes. uh, at that point. But uh, you know what? Uh, the Spartans prevail and uh, really uh, really should, had a gut check there. Really a uh, great which, defensive effort, Tim. It really was. You know, uh, and uh, I'm sorry for interrupting, but, you know, in the, in the second quarter – uh, we gave our defense such short field um, uh, on a uh, just uh, not getting the ball out of our end zone on a on an interception and then just real short fields and those guys really did a great job in making a miss a field goal and taking them out on downs. We had the ball, which seemed like almost the entire first quarter, Tim. We had a 20-play drive with two penalties yeah. in their 18 plays that we ran. That's our second longest drive we've had since we've had been here. And Cordell, still Monkus, and our offensive line really dominated that drive to make it 7 nothing. And then with that uh, snap over our quarterback's head on the first play coming out of the second quarter that put us down on about the one-yard line, Tim, we never got outside the five for the rest of that quarter and our defense hung in there which I thought was the difference in the game Tim I really truly did um, we came out of there with them having a chance to have points and they had zero so we go into halftime seven to nothing we had 92 yards in the first quarter and we had 70 yards when we left the first half 20 yards on that lost snap and we could not gain a yard in the second quarter Tim variety of reasons we had the wind in the second quarter I played that to try to get the wind in the second quarter, and it ended up going, but we were able to do much more effective into the wind. But as I said, our defense was on the field for 9 minutes and 30 seconds in the second quarter, and we were on the field for 11 minutes in the first quarter. So it was that half where they we had the ball in the first quarter and they had the ball in the second quarter, but we were able to score and they were not. And that was the difference in the game, team, without any doubt whatsoever. We had an unsportsmanlike conduct on a, uh, a short punt that gave them good field position, but our defense just hung in there and really played, I thought, a great first half. I think they had 130 yards maybe, and we had 92 or 129. Too. It was a really uh, not much offense in the first half, and part of that was the field conditions. It was very windy. And the first half had a lot of rain. I don't know if it was excessive, but it was steady. And really, I thought the officials, and I told them this at halftime, they did a poor job of drying the ball. Most umpires will stand over the ball with the towel to the center addresses the ball. 
I'll be God danged if I could get the umpire to do that. And I, 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 I could not understand what that was all about. And I'm, I say this is no big deal, but I'm t- we played with Coe's football for two possessions, and I keep telling the official, that's Coe's ball. We're on offense. We want our ball. <laughs> he says, well, I can't find one. What? This guy's got three right behind me. But the point being made is it was just kind of chaotic coming mm-hmm. out of the – the rain delay, mm-hmm. and we've done those before, as you know, Tim, and things just kind of get out of sync, and that was really what the first half was. Yeah, this, before we talk more about the game, uh, take us yeah. in behind the scenes yeah. in the rain delay. W- what's going on? I mean, terrible. The, yeah. Those things are terrible, Tim. So the uh, co gets here about 1045, and the officials have to be here two hours before the game. I'm here about nine hours before the game looking at that dang weather, and you can see it coming. It's going to hit. What you're worried about is not the rain, as you're worried about lightning, because right. NCAA rules say that after lightning is within eight miles, you have to have X amount of time before you can get on the field, not start the game, get on the field to start warm-ups. Well, we get a lightning strike at 12:10, we get a lightning strike at 12:20, get a lightning strike at 105, and you could see that on the radar that's going to happen. So we get the officials together, and we decide to push the game back to two o'clock and just see what happens. Now, Tim, that couldn't have been a better decision made by anybody than that. We missed the lightning. We still hit the rain, but we couldn't get out of that window and out of the rain unless we started 3 o'clock, and then we would have hit it again at the end of the game. So we started that game at 2.05 approximately, and uh, Coach Staker from um, uh, Co came over, and we visited with the officials, and we uh, had a plan, and the plan ended up being really good, and they had the indoor facility to do their stretching in talking about our indoor track and we went to our indoor facility so i didn't feel like we gained much of an advantage on that but it allowed us to wait out that lightning strike now the hard thing tim when you talk about getting behind the scenes every athlete has a body clock just like a coach does so mm-hmm. you're programmed at one o'clock here we go you got this happening at 11 50 you got this happening 11 55 you got that happening at 12 10 and that's that's programmed well all of a sudden you got to reprogram that and set that back. And I said, when I told the kids what's going to happen, I said, the team that's going to win is the team that can do the pre part of it, the focus before you get out there. And luckily I think we did because we played a really good first quarter. So now whether that's all correlates, how do you ever know in the mind of an 18, 19, 20 year old, you just don't You try to give them the information that'll help them get prepared. And I thought we did, but that first half was played pretty well, I thought, for the conditions. Mm -hmm. And I really felt like, boy, uh, the turnovers are going to decide that game. And then when we start the second half, we get a dang punt block for a touchdown. I don't know if they score, Tim, if we don't give up that punt block for a touchdown. I'm honest to God, I don't. Our defense was playing outstanding. And I tell you all the time, Tim, statistics say if you get a punt block in a punt block for a touchdown, you lose 88% of the time. Don't think that wasn't going through my mind after that pump block. <laughs> we were thinking the same thing in the booth. We Holy heard that stat. balls. So <laughs> here we are, and then the next possession they score, and they get up 14-7. to 7. I think it's a direct correlation to how our momentum was after the punt block. But I'm going to say this. In the fourth quarter, we gutted it out. Mm-hmm. We did some great drives. We hadn't thrown the ball very effectively, but we threw two or three passes to get his key first downs. Cordell continued to run hard. Our offensive line reasserted itself, I thought, in the fourth quarter and allowed us to run the ball a little bit more effectively, and we come out with a 20-14 to win. And as you and I talked before we got on the show, we get back up 20-14 to and we miss a dang extra point. There ain't <laughs> many more things that can go wrong than that, my friend. <laughs> and so, But all that being said, I told you last uh, Monday that for our mental health, we needed this game. And I've told you all along, Tim, from the very first show we did, our schedule is front-loaded. We are going to play another undefeated team Saturday in the conference, the third conference opponent we're going to play. Simpson's still undefeated. Wartburg's still undefeated. Those are our two previous opponents in conference. We just knocked off an undefeated co-team who was 2-0, 
And as I said now, hey, we got to play well on Saturday, go down there and have a chance to knock off an undefeated team, not only in the conference, but undefeated in the season. And they just moved into the rankings. Tim, and I think there should be three teams from the American River Conference ranked right now in the top 25. As I told you before, I'm a Raider. I think Wartburg is a top 10 team in the country. I think Central's a top 15 team. And I think Simpson's a top 25 team. And, of course, you know the Simpson game was a toss-up, right? We could easily won that game. We mm-hmm. didn't. And if we're three and two and two and one, our mindset's different right now than it is at two and three and one and two. As I told the men today, that, hey, this is how close you are. And all those close games are decided by one play, two plays, whatever they may be. So when we go to Central on Saturday, we got to play better than we have, and we haven't played our best game yet, Tim. That's still coming. I hope it comes Saturday. And we're going to get a little bit healthier on Saturday. We're getting some folks back now, getting a receiver back that's missed the last three games, uh, getting an offensive lineman that's missed the last two games. So I think we're getting healthier. It's a big challenge because Central's a really good football team. Mm -hmm. But it's been one of my rivals since I've been in the league. We've had some very, very competitive games with them. It's been a lot of fun. They're a team that I, when I got in the league, I thought, the two teams you got to beat consistently to win the league is Warburg and Central, and I think that still plays itself out 11 years later. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the defensive stats I want to point out uh, that, that was uh, really, really outstanding, uh, red zone scoring. Absolutely. Three for three for Dubuque, one for four for and Coe. That's the first time it happened this year, Tim, and that's a direct correlation with us winning, obviously. There's, that, that's exactly right. And as we talked about that short field in the second quarter, it felt like they were on our doorstep the whole dang second quarter. Mm -hmm. And we kept turning them away, not only missing a field goal, but taking it off on downs. And they had the ball, but they couldn't score any points. I'm sure they felt when they went at halftime a lot of frustration because of that. I felt fortunate. I really did, Tim. I thought we could Mm -hmm. behind 14 to 7, 10 to 7, 17 to 7. And I, I really told our defensive staff and I told our defensive players halftime, what a great effort in that first half. Colton Peters and I want yeah. to do uh, mention he had 11 tackles for us. That's a kid who broke his hand in game w- week one and hasn't played as much as he should. He's back playing a little bit more. We got Marcus Taylor back in the game on Saturday. He made had, a big play. He made a big play. He had an ACL injury, you know, and so he, uh, Manuel Jenkins has been going both ways. I never talk about that stuff. It's, no, it happens to everybody. But we're starting to get our team healthy again. I think that'll really pan out for us as we move in the last five games of the season. A guy that's been playing well for you and has a cast on his hand, Blaze <laughs> Barista, and he's done nothing but yeah. uh, had four pr- pass breakups in that game. And, uh, a couple had of couple interceptions, interceptions to that, yep, and he's, uh, been, he's had a hell of a year for us. He really has. He sticks out, and he's made some really big plays for us. And I think we can pick out our defense, our linebackers, and secondary and tell all seven of those guys anything. But where I think we've improved since game two, Tim, is our defensive line is playing a lot better low pad leverage playing a little bit better, not getting knocked off back to the second um, level and allowing our linebackers to play a little bit more. That'll be really important on Saturday uh, against uh, uh, Central, who has... Tim, they, they, you, know, we, you know what they remind me of on offense? Our 2011 team. They really remind me of being able to put the ball out in the perimeter fast, and if you deploy yourself and get dispersed, they're going to run the ball up inside. They really remind me of a team that can move in a hurry and have explosiveness. I think one of the keys, and I'm not jumping ahead here, Tim, but one of the keys is that can we put together the second half we had at Simpson, the first half we had at Wartburg, and the first quarter we had at Cohen running the ball. Can we do that for an entire game? Because to be competitive against Central, you have to stay on the field offensively. This is the University of Dubuque football show on this Monday night. The Spartans head to Pella to take on the Central College Dutch. We'll chat a little bit more with uh, Coach about uh, that ball game, but then we're going to have the uh, rest of our program, our third segment, uh, talking with uh, assistants Rob Heberty and Miles Hookstead. Going to join us on the UD Football Show as well. So we'll come back and uh, get a few more thoughts on uh, the opponent Saturday for the Spartans, the Central Dutch. When we return, this is the UD Football Show on 101.1 The River. And we're back on the University of Dubuque football show here on 101.1 The River. Also, we're uh, video streaming it on the University of Dubuque's uh, website, uh, Facebook. Coach waved hi to the Facebook fans. 
that are watching in. Uh, do you have uh, many followers on your Facebook I'm not page, sure. Coach? I haven't looked at Facebook since it was invented, so I'm not quite <laughs> sure I can tell you. I think that's about the same length of time I have, too, so I'm <laughs> I'm right there with you. Woo! Well, let's talk about the Central College yes. Dutch a little bit more. Uh, you, yeah. you talked about uh, some of the challenges, but, uh, you know, they, they've got, uh, like you said, a lot of personnel back, uh, starting, I guess, with their quarterback, uh, Blaine Hawkins. He He's really the engine that drives the yes. offense. You know, last year they were really going, and he got hurt. And I thought that really changed who they were last year. I think they were might either mid 5-0 and and 6-0 and last year, very similar to where they are this year. Then he got nicked up, a knee injury, and boy, does he look good. He's physical, throws the ball accurately, and then he, he worries you on his legs. Although, Tim, he's not running as much this year as he did last year. If you remember last year against they did a little G scheme, Reed scheme with the quarterback, and he kept kept the ball. And it must have about 85, 86 yards, but always seemed to be the dagger in the heart when he did that to us. Not as running as much. That doesn't mean he won't run, and he will run if the gets flushed out of the pocket. One of the things he does is he improvises so well, Tim. Those receivers seem to be keep – when he starts moving, they start moving. They try to keep things alive, and they've been really, really good offensively. They're 4-0, and and in three of their four games, they've been over 500 yards total offense. They're really a really good offensive football team. Conversely, their defense hasn't been on the field very much because of what their offense does. So they've been very good statistically, defensively. But when you break them down, we'd like to get on the field against them a little bit more and challenge those guys. And they haven't had a game yet, Tim. They have not been in a football game yet. In their four games by the second quarter, they have been ahead by 21 to 28 points. So we'd like to put a little pressure on them and be in that game. I think as we've talked a little bit in the past, I, as I told you a couple minutes ago, we've got to play a full game. We're in game six, but got to get her going now. But that win last Saturday has done tremendous for our morale and just our boost Generally, Mondays look so much brighter after a win, and just they just do. And uh, so we've got a little bit renewed optimism on our football team. Uh, and I told our guys today this is uh, game six, and we're actually uh, – we lift uh, three times a week during the course of the season for our uh, lifting program, and we're going to give them – we just got done with midterms. We're going to give them this week off from lifting. We lifted yesterday, and we won't lift the rest of the week. We've got Friday no classes. I'm trying to get those guys to be rested physically, getting in the you know, mid part of the season, getting rested mentally, and I think this win is going to help propel us on that part. And then that will be an overnight trip for you, so that is uh, different, a yeah. different thing. Yeah, and it's always fun. I think that mm-hmm. part's uh, always good. And, uh, you know, we eat down at the Prairie Meadows Buffet on Saturday morning. Holy God, I put on about nine pounds when I eat that buffet. <laughs> It's not good for a guy that looks like me, but I tell our guys all the time, it's a really wonderful trip. And I don't know that all our players know this, but the players that have been with me, our juniors and seniors, know what tradition Central is. They are the been the number one team in our league over a course of 45, 50 years. Coach Skipper was the president of the FCA. They won a national title. They, they have been kind of the standard bearer of the Iowa Athletic Conference, and now the American Rivers. And, you know, they have not won a league title over us since I've been here. So we'd like to knock them out of the undefeated ranks if we could. It's going to take a heck of an effort by us. They're a really good football team. And I told our guys yesterday, and I told them they we're going to play our best football game so far to date on down there in Saturday at Pella. So excited, looking forward to it, uh, hoping we can put, like I said, more than a half together, try to put together three, four quarters and play better. Health-wise, do you feel like you're going to get a little bit closer? We're to... closer. Uh, Tim, I don't know if we're ever going to be at full strength like we were prior to the Whitewater game. I still think we're going to have probably two or three starters out. We're not sure yet at this point in time. doesn't look like Dwayne Allen's going to be back yet. And so if he isn't 100%, we won't, we won't push that. It's his senior year, and we're not going to risk an injury that would – miss out the last four games but Cordell has done more than you'd expect a, a kid to step into it and At 34 carries yes, uh, he's, Saturday he's going to be a heck of a back force as you well know he really is and we just uh, we're, we're very blessed to have him as our backup and Quentin Bolton did a nice job our number three coming in on Saturday so we feel like that position is pretty solid and I really feel we have to run what run the ball effectively for us to win on Saturday Tim 
Coach, uh, we appreciate your time on this uh, Monday night. So uh, we look forward to hearing uh, from your assistants coming up, uh, Rob Huberty and Miles Hookstead, uh, coming over to talk with us for a little bit. But yeah, They'll uh, do a good job. They talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they got a good teacher. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see you on Saturday then. In, Looking forward uh, to Pella, it. Coach. And don't wear your goulashes, your shoes, whatever they are. It's not going to be any snow on the ground Saturday. How about some wooden shoes? 49 degrees. No wooden shoes. 49 degrees. Sunny, a little bit chilly. Just what it should be like for football. All right. All right. Football weather. Coach is jacked up for the game at Central. Yes. I can tell. It's Monday only, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop in and Thursday yes. and see how we'll you're see doing. We'll see how doing that, all right? Coach Stan Zweifel is joining us on the UD Football Show here on 101.1 The River. And we'll come back and uh, we'll talk with the assistants, uh, Rob Huberty and Miles Hookstead. Tough act to follow for those gentlemen when they return with us here on 101.1 The River. And we're back on this Monday night. It's the UD Football Show here on 101.1 The River from Coach Stan Zweifel's office. And we're going to talk with a couple of assistants uh, joining us this week on the program. First one, uh, Paul Pacheron, join us. Uh, Rob Huberty, who is the inside linebackers and special teams coach, uh, again, for the Spartans. And good to see you, Rob. Yeah, thanks again for having me on. Well, your take on the season right now, the Spartans 2-3. Uh, and three, uh, Got back close to that 500 mark on uh, uh, Saturday. And certainly that was a huge win uh, as Coach Zweifel uh, – just chronicle for us uh, for a mindset for this team. Yeah, absolutely. It uh, was a little bit of a rough start. Um, you know, felt we uh, haven't reached our potential yet. We're still getting to where we need to be as a uh, program. And so uh, just getting that win on Saturday was just, you know, the step in the right direction that we needed, kind of get us a boost going, get the morale up a little bit, and just show that we are still a competitive football program when it's not a down year or nothing like that. And anybody can beat anybody on Saturday. So. The defense, uh, as we just talked about uh, with Coach Sweet, full outstanding effort uh, against Coe. And, uh, I mean, how would you rate that one uh, as as uh, compared to the other ones so far this year? Yeah, definitely one of our top performances of the season so far. Um, you know, being put in some, some tough situations, some short fields, you know, with turnovers and, uh, you know, not – not great uh, flipping the field in some special teams aspects. You know, we just responded very well. You know, came away with an interception late in the uh, uh, first half to kind of kill a drive there. Uh, two other short fields that we turned away. I believe there was a missed field goal uh, on another one. So it was just really good to see them to respond to some adversity, not uh, crumble a little bit and just give up easy scores, you know, and, and kind of best case scenario is a field goal attempt and we held them to that kind of stuff. So uh, really excited to see that piece. Since you're the uh, linebackers coach, inside linebackers, uh, talk about uh, talk about your personnel and uh, how they've uh, fared for you this year. Yeah, the piece that's been uh, really cool is the guys that have come back, you know, Adam Steingraber, Chad Marsh, Freddie Walton, uh, Marshawn Crowder's been with me here a little bit these past couple weeks, but those guys have been with me now for a little bit over a year, and what's exciting is when we're talking about adjustments the opponent's making or things that we need to do, the conversations can go so much faster now because we understand how to communicate effectively with each other. They understand what I kind of look for, and they do that within their own film study. So then we come on the sidelines, and I can go to Chad, I can go to Adam, I can go to uh, Brandon Dukowitz, I can go to whoever. Hey, what are you guys seeing out there? What are they doing? Anything different from film that they've shown? Oh, yeah, they've done this a little bit differently. They've blocked this differently. Okay, and then we can figure out how to make adjustments so much faster. Where last year we were trying to get on the same page in terms of communication. So, And then they've played well. They really just come out. They try to uh, set the tone, set the example for – uh, for the defense, and they've done really well so far. And let's switch gears to, to special teams. Uh, <laughs> talk about uh, there's there's been some challenges there, no doubt about it. But uh, you know what, uh, you guys are working hard to make sure that uh, is where it needs to be. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just uh, it's always going to be a, a you know the third aspect of the game. You got to make sure that you're solid in that because it can easily win and lose your ball games. Um, like Coach mentioned, the block punt statistic being able to overcome that on Saturday was huge. Yeah. Uh, you know, usually that's kind of uh, kind of the nail in the coffin often more often than not, but we were able to overcome that bit of adversity. Um, it's just really good to have, you know, the skilled specialists that we do, Andy Vunovic and, and Tyler Sheffield do a really good job in the kicking game. They understand what their strengths and where maybe some of their limitations are right now. They keep working on that stuff throughout the week. And it's not, you know, uh, typical specialists to just kind of hang out on the sideline <laughs> during practice. They're actually focusing on drills yeah. and uh, and trying to get better at those little aspects. Yeah, it's certainly a different ball game than uh, maybe uh, you know the 
upper division level. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit different. You have to uh, scheme maybe a little bit more where you don't have a guy that can just boot it 60, 70 yards on a punt or you don't have a guy that can exactly play. So you got to scheme a little bit, of course. But uh, like I said, our guys work really hard. We try on those units to find the guys that want to be on those teams, you know, kickoff team, punt team, et cetera. Rob, well, thanks uh, for giving us some insight uh, on the linebacker court and also special teams, and uh, good seeing you. Thanks for yeah. coming by, and uh, good luck on Saturday and the rest of the season, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks All for having right. me again. And we'll have uh, Miles Hookstead come in here, and you can uh, give him the handoff. Hopefully he won't uh, fumble there. He never, he never did much of that when he was – Playing for the University of Dubuque, of course. I don't remember any fumbles Miles had. So I hope I didn't have any, to be honest with you. <laughs> You'd probably remembered it uh, from Coach Sweeple. Yes. Uh, good to see you again, Miles. Yeah, always. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, you're in charge of the wide receiver core. But, uh, you know, first of all, let's uh, you know, visit about uh, this offense. Uh, what, what have you seen uh, here the last couple of weeks that uh, has given you some promise that the, the Spartans are about ready to get that full game together like Coach Sweeple want, said? You know, I thought the offensive line is really improving each and every single week, and that's where it all starts, obviously. Uh, Coach Clark's doing a heck of a job with those guys and, and uh, beat up a little bit there, which, you know, it's football. It's going to happen. you got to have people step up, and we've had people step up in that group and perform better, and uh, to have a freshman in the backfield and uh, still Monk is to be able to run the football the way he did really the last two weeks is very encouraging in that aspect. And, uh, you know, we haven't performed well in the throw game. It's been a little bit of a disappointment, you know, from our standards at least. And, uh, you know, Duffy and our wide receivers, we're, get, we're getting there. We're getting closer and closer, but we're not there yet. And uh, we got continue to improve because to be able to put that full game together you have to have the throw game going with the run game you just can't be one-sided obviously you can't let a defense focus in on one side because then you're going to struggle on the other aspect so we got to continue to prove on all areas obviously but be able to get that timing down be able to uh, hit a wide receiver when he's open and obviously catch the ball when it gets there you know our wide receivers uh, just got to continue to improve uh, along with our quarterback so it's not just one thing I mean it's a it's uh, some things that have to come together uh, at at just the right time and and that's a team sport of football you know it's not in in basketball you can have a guy go off for 40 points and hey the other guys might not played very well but hey you can you know withstand in baseball you can have a pitcher throw a no-hitter, and you might not be able to hit the ball at all, but you're able to still get the victory. In football, mm-hmm. it's just a little bit different. And you know, those other sports, obviously team sports as well, but football is the ultimate team sport, and you got to have all – 10 guys, excuse me, all 11 guys working together, uh, doing the job, doing their assignment, staying focused, and otherwise you're not going to be successful. And we've seen the spurts of how good we can be. You know, not many teams can go yeah. on an 18, 20, uh, 19 play drive like we did this past Saturday against an undefeated co team in conference play. You know, that was huge for us to be able to do that. Uh, but you also see the the struggles of it. You know, obviously the 19 yard loss that pinned us back on the one yard line, and, uh, we, you know, just miss queuing on a couple of things. So we got to continue mm-hmm. improving. We will. We've gotten better every single week. And unfortunately, we, we opened up with Warburg, excuse me, Simpson, then Warburg and Co. You know, three of the powerhouses in this league over you know, ever since I've been here. And now we're going against the fourth one in Central. So very front loaded in our schedule. That's not an excuse. That's just the way the schedule worked out. So we got to continue to improve every week, which we have. And now we're going to be able to go against another undefeated team in conference. And we're going to do everything we can to knock them uh, out of the un unbeaten ranks mm-hmm. you've been uh you're blessed to have a deep uh core of receivers and uh you had to take uh ej jenkins uh yeah. who was a receiver for you last year back on the other side of the ball at times this year so so there's been some challenges there but to talk about your uh, uh group of receivers great group of wide, wide receivers and unfortunately we haven't all been healthy at the same time that's been the biggest uh mm-hmm. the biggest issue so far to have uh the senior and cody reamer and along with uh, emmanuel jenkins that you mentioned ej uh coming back and playing a little bit of both ways now for us those two guys are very talented and as you work on down through we've got a lot of talented guys but we haven't been healthy all together and then when they are all going to be healthy which is hopefully very soon here now how are you going to get six wide receivers on the football game you know yeah. and keep those all all those guys happy and the one thing that those guys have done a great job of i actually told them tonight was tremendous teammates you know as a wide receiver you want to play every snap you don't ever want to leave the field you know good players don't want to do that and for our guys to be able to say, yeah, I'm going to come off for two or three plays because I know we're putting in a guy who's just as good as me. He might do something a little bit different than I do and not pout about it, not get upset, not make it about themselves, but make it about the team. And those, that's what that group has done a great job of. You know, we're talented. We we can run. We can catch. We You know, we got the quickness. We got the football IQ, all those things. But their ability to be teammates and support one another and know that, hey, what we're doing offensively, we're trying to win a football game. Yeah, we want the individual accolades, you know, always. You know, though, that comes with the team success. 
process, though. So our guys to be able to understand that and be great teammates and encourage one another and uh, know that everything's about the team is the most encouraging thing right now. Miles, always great to see you, and thanks yep. for uh, jumping on the show with us for a few minutes to talk about the wide receivers and the offense. And uh, good luck to the Spartans on Saturday and the rest of the season. Looking forward to it. Go Spartans. Yeah, we'll see you Saturday. All right, Miles Hookstead uh, joining us on our UD football show here this evening. Uh, before that, Rob Huberty and, of course, Coach Zweifel. And we're out of time for our UD football show here for this Monday night. We'll be back here next Monday night at uh, 6 o'clock with another UD football show. And, of course, don't miss the uh, contest on 101.1 on the river and uh, also our website and there's a, a link to it on the University of Dubuque's uh, website as well to listen to the audio stream 1240 with the pregame 1 o'clock with a kickoff as the Spartans travel to Pella to take on the Central College Dutch so we'll talk to you then from the University of Dubuque coaching offices I'm Tim Larry on 101.1 the river